Excellency Ambassador Haifa Abu Ghazela, Excellencies, colleagues and friends, it is a true pleasure addressing you and extend a very warm welcome to the Regional Workshop on the Emergency Committee for the protection of women during armed conflict in the Arab region. Today, we are privileged to be among a distinguished group of experts and representatives from institutions dedicated to enhancing the protection of women and girls during armed conflict, a topic that is so incredibly important to address as conflict-related sexual violence used as a weapon of war has incredible detrimental effects on individuals, families, communities for many decades and indeed generations. This workshop provides a timely opportunity to engage in important discussions on the role of the Emergency Committee in raising further awareness and finding effective responses to address the issues at hand. I would like to express our deep appreciation to our valued partner, the League of Arab States, and in particular, the leadership of Ambassador Haifa. Your continuous and unwavering dedication to advancing the women, peace and security agenda in the Arab States is applaudable and we commend the League's efforts in advancing the work of the Emergency Committee in the region. You and Women is very honoured to be a long-standing partner of the League of the Arab States, and together we can proudly say that our collaboration yielded many critical results at various levels. From the Regional Strategy for Women, Peace and Security and the Executive Action Plan, approved by the Ministerial Council in 2015, to the establishment of the Emergency Committee to protect women during armed conflict and the Arab Network for Peace Mediators, as well as ongoing capacity building for member states on women, peace and security, national action plans on UN Security Council Resolution 1325. As we speak, no less than six nations in this region, Iraq, Libya, the occupied Palestinian territories, Syria, Sudan and Yemen, experience protected conflict with a tremendous humanitarian toll. While the scale and scope of crisis may vary, these countries have endured strife for at least the past decade, leaving a lasting impact. Syria remains one of the world's largest humanitarian crises, with millions displaced and in need, further straining neighboring countries' infrastructure and services. And we know from ample evidence globally that in times of conflict, women and girls endure specific challenges. Gender-based and conflict-related sexual violence sadly becomes more prevalent and disproportionately affects women and girls. In 2021 alone, women and girls represented 97% of all reported cases of conflict-related sexual violence from 18 conflict and post-conflict affected contexts globally, but including from this region. Furthermore, conflict also affects women's access to essential services and job opportunities. As a result of conflict and crisis, women and girls often face food scarcity, extreme poverty. They struggle to regain lost land and property during and in the aftermath of conflicts. Most recently in Sudan, nearly 1.4 million people have been newly displaced since the 15th of April. Reports of gender-based violence and domestic violence have alarmingly increased. It is against this backdrop that UN Women, together with the League of Arab States, prioritizes putting into action our joint commitments regarding the protection of women and girls in conflict and post-conflict settings. In this joint endeavor, you as our member states, as member states of the Emergency Committee, play an imperative role in ensuring women's presence in decision-making processes, in promoting women's equal representation in protection, prevention, mediation, and conflict resolution efforts. The importance of these efforts is underlined by evidence demonstrating that when women are included, peace agreements are more likely to be reached and implemented, with peace-building initiatives more responsive to community needs and peace more sustainable. Indeed, as case studies on peace agreements globally have shown, peace agreements with women signatories have on average an implementation rate of approximately 89%, compared to 77% for agreements with only male signatories. Therefore, your work in reviewing and formulating unified and integrated policies that respond to the specific needs of women and girls during conflict will be of critical importance. Your efforts to strengthen the capacity of actors and systems in the security sector are further enabling progress to the promote the role of women and girls in countering violent extremism. In concluding, allow me to underscore the importance of tangible evidence and reliable data 
the committee's opportunity to monitor the impact of conflicts on women and girls in conflict and post-conflict situations is central to allow tailored responses. The evidence produced will enhance efficiency and sustainability of response systems and effectiveness of initiatives by various actors and institutions in the Arab states. Once again, I thank you and you and Women of Course remains committed to its active role and cooperation with the League of Arab States and all of you, our regional partners, in the implementation of the Women, Peace and Security Agenda. Thanks again.